Hey everyone, Brendan Snyder here. How are you? Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to another episode of Random CDs, Random Facts. So this is where I'm simply gonna blind myself, reach out and touch a CD and we'll talk about it. I'll give you some information on it. Uh, how interesting that'll be, we'll wait and see because this is all just off the cuff, but it should be a lot of fun and we'll go through a bunch of them that way and go around uh, some different areas and parts of my music room so we can hit on some different genres and things like that. So stick around for that. But before we get started, if you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please click the button. Also, leave a comment, hit like, all those things help support my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus, if you turn on notifications, you're going to get updates on things just like this with a random CDs, random facts video like this that's happening. So, um, all right, let's go ahead and get started in it. I'm just going to slide right over here and rotate this around a bit. So we're set up. This area here is my glam metal section. So that's what's going to be coming out of this here. And this is very simple. I'm just going to cover up like this and I'm going to touch. <laughs> Look at that. I actually touched the wall. All right, that one doesn't count. Let's try this again. <laughs> All right, so this one here is a Michael Monroe album, uh, in particular um, called uh, <laughs> What You Want. Uh, it's phonetically spelled in order to come out sounding like that. But man, Michael Monroe, I have to say, is like the most consummate rock star out there. This guy looks the part no matter what is going on. If you've ever seen him doing interviews, walking down the street. Uh, this guy, you know, uh, lived down in the village in New York City. I saw him a few times. And this guy just always looked like the rock and roller. You know, you, you just couldn't separate that from him. And I thought that was always great. And I mean, of course, you see it in the photos that are part of this. But I mean, sometimes you, that's just the way rock stars get worked up not this guy. And of course, if you don't know that he was part of Hanoi Rocks, uh, definitely got to check that band out. Um, and most of you guys know this one, so this may not be a cool little fact or not, but, uh, you know, lesser or an unknown one, but uh, they say that uh, Axl Rose, Guns N' Roses lead vocalist, and that uh, swaggering sway thing that he would do, uh, especially during like Sweet Child of Mine and stuff like that, taken from Michael Monroe. If you watch early videos of him long before Axel was doing it, Michael Monroe was doing it. So cool little uh, tip there on that. Great stuff. Um, all right, so I'm going to spin around, see if we can do this again. I'm going to slide over first and keep rotating. And now this area that's here is actually the uh, heavy metal section. So we've got, I've got all kinds of stuff. I've got speed and thrash and uh, power metal and all of that, all kinds of metal in this area here. So we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna simply cover my eyes and, all right, good. We didn't hit uh, uh, the, um, oh wow. Okay, I'm gonna put this one back. Last time we did an overkill and I've hit another overkill. And that's because I've got a section like this big of overkill. But I'm gonna reach down a little bit lower in this. And in fact, actually, you know what? Uh, since you couldn't see that, I'm gonna, I re realize now I'm gonna just reach a little behind me and do this. So here we go. Oh, see, you know, this isn't as easy as it looks. People think I'm just like, I can touch one of these things and then fade in and fade out and so forth and do it. I'm not even able to hit because I really don't know where I'm, uh, I'm going with this. So here, let's try this again. There we go. All right. Oh, fight. This, I love this. So War of Words, absolutely classic. I mean, a lot of times when lead vocalists go solo or whatever, you know, okay, they might make a good album, whatever, but... I think that Rob Halford made a classic 90s metal album. It came with the power and everything that was Judas Priest, especially with Painkiller, but it pulled it into the 90s. And if Judas Priest had tried to do this, it probably would have been uh, shut down and so forth. But because it was under a new band name, and it was essentially Rob Halford solo, but you know he formed a band, uh, this did really well, actually, especially the song Little Crazy, which is not as heavy as uh, like the two opening tracks that are full on thrash almost into the pit, nailed to the gun. Just brutal, brutal tracks. But um, I love this, man. This this was a great, great album. And at the time, you could mail in and get a CD of uh, limited edition remixes that would later turn up on their EP that came out after this. But the remix for a little bit crazy is uh, actually started also to get a lot of radio play and things like that. So it's kind of interesting. Metal band, and then you had remixes and stuff like that for it but 
Love this album. Very, very good stuff. All right, now I actually do have to uh, fade in, fade out because I want to take us over to another area and we'll do that. So I'll be right back. So I just repositioned the camera so that we're over further into the rock area. As I mentioned before, glam metal and heavy metal were over there, but this is just straight ahead rock. So once again, blindfold myself and see where we go. Sting. All right, so this album here, which if I can read it real quickly, Sacred Love, uh, I think this is 2003 and it was the last album of new original material that he did for like a decade or longer. And he did some other stuff uh, in between their um, classical album. And then he did the one that was uh, eventually turned into Broadway, you know, show and stuff like that. But of, of the type of stuff that we know Sting for, um, it was not until 2005. 14, 15, somewhere in there that we finally got a brand new Sting album. So for a long time, this was the last one here. And this one has a lot of guest artists on it, Mary J. Blige and stuff like that. And he tried some different things on this. It wasn't my cup of tea. Out of all the albums, I kind of like this one least. Uh, it was a little bit too much of that early 2000s era kind of stuff. But, you know, it became one of those albums that was the last one from him for a long time. So people went back to it. So I think it's kind of grown in stature since then. But that's kind of my take on this one. I think there's far better uh, Sting albums out there. But I want to do uh, this one that's behind me here. So let's rotate this a bit here, like so. And I'll slide out of the way. And uh, we're going to try something in this one. So I'll simply cover my eyes and Ah, we hit on some Mellencamp, the self-titled album. So this one here is on Columbia, which was after he left Mercury. Signed a really big deal to do this one. He had been pretty popular having hits off of his uh, 90s era albums. Remember Dance Naked and Wild Night and stuff like that and Key West Intermezzo and, and stuff. Um, so, you know, he signs a deal and he does this. And then unfortunately, this one here didn't really do a whole lot for him. Uh, Your Life Is Now is the first single and the lead track. And this one still got some radio play and whatnot, but it just didn't do a lot. And I have to say, there wasn't a lot of character on this one, in my opinion, uh, the way that uh, some of his other albums were. There was other albums where there was always a track or two that really, really stood out kind of a thing and had a lot of flavor to it uh, in terms of a style, you know, whether he did more soul or more 60s rock style or something like that, you know, the Key West Intermezzo um, album, which is uh, Happy Go Lucky, Mr. Happy Go Lucky. You know, that one had a very 90s flavor in it because it had the drum loops and beats and things like that and stuff. So his albums had that. And then we got to this and it was all stripped away. And that's not a bad thing. It's just, I didn't feel that this album itself had as much character as some of the others on there and so forth. So, okay, we've got four. Let's do a fifth one. I'll slide over here and we're going to do this air. We're all still in the rock area here. Um, but let me just cover my eyes and we'll... Oh, this is my favorite Lindsey Buckingham album, uh, which is, uh, get the title right, Out of the Cradle. I was going to say From the Cradle, but so many albums, you know, I uh, always got to just double check sometimes on these things. Love, love, love this album. Um, it's... And I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. It is one of those those albums where I think this should have been as big as say, Fleetwood Max Tango in the Night kind of a thing. It is just that good. Uh, this was at another uh, you know period where he was out of the band and he was recording this and he was choosing to make a more pop sounding record. Uh, so he was specifically writing in that vein and he's done that now twice where he made this album and his most recent one that is the self-titled, I'm gonna pull it out there, that came out in 2019. This album here, I have to say, two best albums of his entire career sit right here. And they're not even the big sort of popular ones that came early on. That's just my take on it. But um, I've always been a, a big fan of his work in Fleetwood Mac. And I only recently, meaning within the last, say, three, four years, got into his solo work. But I've really started to see the beauty of that and love what he does. Um, Out of the Cradle, definitely highly recommend but I would also tell you, go out and buy his latest one. So, all right, so yeah, let's see what we got here. In the end of the day, we did 
Michael Monroe, What You Want. We did Fight, War of Worlds. Um, next up was Sting, Sacred Love. And then self-titled John Mellencamp, followed by Out of the Cradle, Lindsey Buckingham. So those five is where we went today. And hopefully you got some cool information on that or at least piqued your interest to go out and explore these albums. And then just along the way, I didn't talk about it, uh, the Overkill album here. This one was for Immortals or Mortalis. Uh, but it was an advanced copy of it. I had talked about Overkill the last time and they are a phenomenal band, but I didn't think we needed to do Overkill again. But you got a little bit of that thrown in there. And you also got this one here from uh, the self-titled Lindsay. So really seven things in there. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode of Random CDs, Random Facts. You never know quite where it's gonna go because it's just an off the cuff type video. All right, everyone, have a good day. Take care and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.